Hello and welcome back to another edition of the IU Film Room, the first of its kind for the 2020-2021 season for the Indiana Hoosiers. That is a lot of 20s. 2020, 2021. Uh, nonetheless, we are back for the, the first round here of uh, this season in the IU Film Room, diving into the Tennessee Tech game. Um, saw a lot of good things from the Hoosiers. Um, First 10 to 15 minutes were a little sloppy. It was almost like it was the first game of the year. Um, IU Twitter was losing its mind. So, yeah, I felt like we were right back in the swing of things here. Um, but nonetheless, really excited to dive into some of these clips with you. Uh, as we look at this Tennessee Tech game, we're going to look at um, offensively, we're going to look at some of the sets, some of the actions that I liked from, from the Hoosiers last night, um, both against man and zone. Um, and then defensively, Archie had mentioned – uh, leading up to the season that we were going to see some different actions uh, when the Hoosiers regarding ball screens. He did not lie. We saw some different things uh, last night than we had seen uh, in previous seasons under Archie Miller. So excited to dive into those two. As always, I appreciate you watching, listening, uh, giving feedback, commenting, whatever you may do. Um, if, you, if you're here and you don't follow me on Twitter, please give me a follow at Coach Adrania right here on your screen. Um, would really appreciate that. As uh, as I do more and more of these uh, IU film room things. If you like it, share it. If you don't like it, let me know. Uh, happy to have uh, constructive, civil conversations about these things. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's dive into the uh, the first clips to break down here. So as we look at the first clip here, uh, it's it's the first offense possession of the season for the Hoosiers, and I really enjoyed it because it's just something that helps set the tone for the game when you run a play like this. Um, I think we all remember that it was a lob, but I kind of want to dive into how that lob was able to take place and what could have happened after it um, if if the lob wasn't there. And uh, I really like this because it just helps set the tone for the game. Uh, in my personal coaching, I like to do a lob uh, of some sort, maybe to start games or big games to get uh, you know get the crowd into it. Well, obviously that wasn't the case in this game. It just helps set the tone um, that that you're going to be the aggressor. So we dive into this clip. I want to dive into a couple things first here. So as we look at uh, Race Thompson here, he set this down screen. Al popped out to the wing. Well, now if we look at it, we've got Armand is here. He's going to go right to the, the baseline here. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a clear out for this entire side of the floor. And we see Trace here setting a back screen for Rob. So what does that back screen do? Well, while that whole side of the floor is cleared out, it essentially is creating all this space here for Rob. Um, I mean, if you look at that, he's not got anybody within 10 feet of him here. Uh, good screen by Trace. So Rob catches that uh, right there, and he lays it up. But what I want to go back to is, if so if we look at right here, this is, gonna, this is a back screen, ball screen action if Rob doesn't get that pass so you see trace here he set that back screen for rob he goes here but if rob doesn't catch it here he could act, he would actually float out to this corner and now you've got a ball screen with al durham and trace so trace would go set this ball screen here and then al would be able to come off that and you've got a shooter in the corner al's coming off a ball screen you've got your best post player rolling to the basket so that's what that action would have looked like um, if Rob just didn't get this easy two points right here. But great way for the Hoosiers to uh, to set the tone for the game. Next clip is just a very simple one, but I wanted to show it because uh, it just kind of gives you an idea of what Archie Miller would like this offense to look like. Um, so we see uh, we've got Al right here dribbling down the floor. You've actually got three guys in front of him, uh, the defense in front of him, uh, but what IU is hoping to do is push the pace this year. Uh, we see here Rob, or not Rob, excuse me, Al takes the ball. He gets past three defenders and takes it. So they're running the floor. He's not slowing it up. He's not trying to uh, to set up an offense. He's got the ball, and his first action is looking up the floor and trying to score, which I really like from the Hoosiers, and, and it's something that uh, hopefully we're going to see more of as we go into this season. So a simple clip there, but just wanted to show it to kind of give you an idea of uh, what Archie's hoping this offense can look like, especially on misses and turnovers. So this clip was actually one of my favorite actions I saw IU ran last night, um, and it's it's something that I was hoping we'd, we'd see IU do last season. I, if you watched my film rooms, 
Um, it was something uh, that I noted that I wanted to see more role replace actions with Jerome Hunter at the four. Well, this is, we got exactly that in this clip. So if we look uh, at Archie here, you're going to actually see him uh, like pull, push his fists together, then hold up two. He's basically calling stack two. Uh, so that's the play that I is going to run here. It is stack two. So if we look at this, um, you're going to see I you get into this now. So they hear it's stack two. Basically, what stack two means is you've got uh, Trace and uh, I believe that's Armand there at the top of the key. Basically, you've got a couple shooters that float to the corner. That's your initial alignment. Um, and they're in a stack here at the top of the top of the key. That's why it's called stack. Uh, so what this is going to do is you're going to see back screen by Trace there. You're going to see Al float to the opposite corner. So basically you've got uh, Trey Galloway here in this corner. You've got Jerome in this corner, but he's starting to float up. You've got Trace that just set a back screen, and now he's going to set a ball screen. Similar action we saw them run on that lob, um, except for Rob was open on that lob on the first play of the game. So... We look at that back screen, we look at that ball screen. Now this is what I want to show you. So we're going to end up seeing um, Armand take a pull-up sh shot here and get uh, get a wide open look and, and make two points, but there's actually quite a few options that he had on this. So if we run this here, we look. So Trey set that ball screen. So his this is our man, Armand's man right here now. So he's... He's trailing Armand Franklin's backside now. Now, Armand does, has a great read of here. I mean, he, he takes a pull-up jumper. That's perfectly fine. He makes the shot. Uh, you see Trace is diving to the rim. So his diving to the rim, what that does off of a ball screen is it makes Jerome Hunter's man help. He's, he's what's called the tag guy. So he has to help as Trace is diving to the rim. So he's helping on Trace, and as he's doing that, Jerome Hunter is just lifting up. So Jerome Hunter is actually wide open for a three-point shot here. That's one of IU's best three-point shooters. It's called a roll replace action. And and like I said, Armand's got several different reads he can make here. Um, but what I really like here is that by Trace rolling to the basket here and Armand's man trailing him, Jerome Hunter is able to lift here, replace Trace, and he's wide open for three. Now Armand makes a shot. That's great. Um, but he, he had multiple options. So I mean, look at all that space that Jerome Hunter's got here. I mean, he his closest guy is the guy that was trailing Armand. If Armand hits him there, uh, that's a wide-open three-point shot. So I think we'll see this action a lot more from the Hoosiers, uh, making teams guard him, um, especially with a good shooter like that, able to replace. But nonetheless, Armand makes two. Uh, like that action from IU. Again, that was called uh, stack two, I believe, from, from Archie there. This clip here wasn't as much of an offensive set as it was. I want to show you just... Uh, how nice it is to have another person that handles the ball um, with a high basketball IQ on this roster. Um, and this that uh, it was, it's a nice little zone action of, again, this wasn't a set play, but it was just IU guys understanding how to play hoops. Uh, so we look at this here. Lander has a nice pump fake. So he's able to drive by this guy here on the baseline. Um, so we've got the guy on the baseline here on, on Lander's hip. He knows he's got him beat now. He went flying past him. So now Lander, he's already thinking about his next decision he's going to make. But what I like here is that Trace is basically sealing here. So that's that's occupying this third guy that really should be more so kind of focused on Al here. But Trace being here forces this guy on Tennessee Tech, uh, the bottom outside guy of the defense, to stay with him. So what this is going to end up doing is this guy here is going to have to go down to take away Lander's drive. This guy is having to stay with Trace. And what we're going to see is Lander drives. So Race, just being smart, gets into space. He doesn't go get too low. He doesn't stay up here. He just gets into space. So we've we've now got uh, Race in space. <laughs> There's a nice little rhyme for you. You've got Al Durham that's wide open here too because Trace has this bottom guy of the zone occupied. But Race just finds space. Lander does a nice little look off. And what you're going to see is nice little dump pass and a dunk so just smart basketball IQ that wasn't a play or a set or anything that Archie ran it was just guys playing basketball and knowing where to be on the floor uh, which was a really promising sign for for this team another set I liked last night from the Hoosiers was uh, this one we're about to dive into because basically if you're guarding it you're, you're thinking that okay um, this is an act some type of action for the guards but really it's all about 
uh, Trace Jackson Davis and where he's able to set his final screen. So as we run this action, we see Trace sets one screen. So now he's setting this second screen here. So Trace has this guy here. He's setting a screen on him. Uh, so Armand Franklin is able to pop out. But by him setting this screen basically right here under the basket, we see him. He just puts his butt into his guy, and he's got his guy sealed here. So this is just an excellent seal. That guy, there's absolutely no way he can guard Trace Jackson Davis as he's got him sealed right there, basically with his head under the rim. Armand does a nice job of finding him. Trace has an easy two and one. So just a, just a great kind of uh, action that, that masks that they're trying to get Trace Jackson the ball uh, on the block or basically under the rim there. Um, it's all about how deep Trace can get that screen set and then finding the ball quickly so he doesn't get a three-second violation. Um, good execution by the Hoosiers there. Nice little action that I like to see from them. So we're going to see a similar action that we just saw in the last play here, uh, but it's going to be for Jerome Hunter. So basically what we're going to see is we're going to see Al's going to set a cross screen here uh, for Trace, and then you're going to see Jerome's going to set a down screen for Al. Um, so that's kind of the, the basic action that you're going to see is cross screen, down screen. Uh, but in all honesty, I don't think they were looking for Trace on the cross screen. I don't think they were looking to get Al a shot at the, at, at the down screen. I think this entire time they were looking to get Jerome Hunter the ball on the block and able to turn over his, his shoulder that he likes. Um, it, just the way that the offense flowed, I think they got exactly what they were looking for. So as we run the action here, we see there's the cross screen, not really even a great screen, down screen. Like I said, it None of that looked like it was any sort of action to try to get Trace or Al the ball. I think it was all about getting Jerome Hunter. Now he's got an ISO post up. They must have liked what they saw with who was guarding him. They get him the ball. Nice seal. He's able to turn over his left shoulder. Nice little baby hook. Two points for the Hoosiers. So another action that I really, really liked uh, to see from the Hoosiers. So that roll replace action that I talked about uh, a couple clips back with uh, Jerome Hunter kind of lifting um, after Trace set a ball screen. Um, this is that exact same action. So it actually ended up in a pull-up jumper for the guard coming off the ball screen, uh, which, which is fine. They both resulted in two points. But I want to show you again just why I like this action so much. So Trace sets the ball screen. In all honesty, this number two on, uh, on Tennessee Tech probably didn't have to help as much as he did. But Trace is diving. All right, His man has already hedged onto Fennessey. So now number two has to go and try to take away Trace's roll in his dive. And what that does is it, it's, um, it's going to end up being this exact same action for Al. So let me get that black line off the screen for you. So now you've got Al's man is all the way down here trying to take away Trace. Al is right here. In all honesty, Al needs to get up more on the line so that he, he's open there. But um, it's another roll replace action where... You've got Trace that obviously is a force down low. You've got guys that are helping on his roll, and you've got guys that are just filling where Trace was at that are good shooters. You've got another wide-open look here for, for one of IU's best shooters when they run that action. So something I really look forward to seeing the Hoosiers run more this season. Um, I'm really excited about it, and as we see, Fennessey knocks down a, a long two. Uh, but nonetheless, two points, but roll replace action. Definitely going to see IU do a lot of that. Um, and it's going to get wide open looks for good shooters. So this is a zone offense clip. And what I really like about this is it, it shows you the, the value of moving without the basketball, even against the zone. So many times over years past um, in, and under different regimes, we watched IU kind of just float around the perimeter against the zone, pass it around, not a lot of movement. Um, and that doesn't usually yield uh, too many great looks. So what I want to dive into here is is IU moves the ball. You get Trace Jackson Davis the ball that easy in the middle of the floor, a lot of good things are going to happen because the defense is going to collapse around him. They know that he makes plays. Um, but if if uh, Geronimo just kind of floats out to the wing here or he just stays put on the elbow, not a lot of good things can happen from this because you're easy to guard. But what we see is Geronimo dives here. As he dives... Somebody has to take the basketball, which is going to end up being this middleman, so he's going to take Trace. As Geronimo dives, this guy out here has to make a decision. Am I going to leave a shooter in the corner, or am I going to leave a dunk for Geronimo? And we see the decision he makes is he's, he's not going to let Geronimo get a dunk, but this dive right here by Geronimo, now look at that guy. 
the out that bottom guy of the zone is now all the way down here in the paint with Geronimo. You've got the middle guy occupying Trace. So now you've got a wide, wide, wide open look out there on the top of the key. Or excuse me, not the top of the key. That's the baseline. Finnessy, wide open look, knocks it down three points. So just some, some subtle off-ball movement from Geronimo caused that entire play to be possible. And the last offensive play that we're going to look at here uh, is just a simple quick hit action that IU ran last night. They actually ran it last season as well. So what you're going to see here is Al's going to set a cross screen to get Armand to float to the corner here. And it's not really much of a cross screen. It's more of just kind of a rub. And then you're going to see Al set another cross screen on Trace's man here. And you're going to see Trace roll to the basket right here. And it's a simple action. It's a double quick hit cross screen. But as you'll see, IU does a nice job of executing. You've got Armand out there in the corner. And now you see Al sets that nice little cross screen on Trace's man. Trace gets the ball into the basket. He lays it up two points. And now we get to the defensive side of the ball. And like I noted at the, the top of this, um, really looking at the way IU guarded ball screens last night because it was a little bit different than what we saw last season. So uh, traditionally, IU plays pack line defense, which basically means when a ball screen is set, the guy who's guarding the screener will hedge out um, until the, uh, the guy guarding the ball can recover. And then the guy guarding the screener will, will go back to guarding the screener. So uh, that's, that's a very elementary version of saying that's how I use guarded ball screens traditionally. But we actually saw a little bit uh, of a different um, coverages last night. So uh, we're going to dive into those. So initially we're going to look at this is a guard-to-guard -guard switch on a ball screen. Now we've got Trey guarding the ball, um, still guarding the ball. So we're going to see a ball screen here. Now there's no switch there. So why didn't we see a switch? Because it wasn't guard to guard. So what we saw was IU uh, doing switches guard to guard. But now we see a ball screen from Trace's man, and, and Galloway stays with his guy. And he actually had pretty good defense there, just a good offensive possession. So we saw a guard to guard switch. This next clip here, what we see, uh, so we see it's kind of a double ball screen here. So... Lander's guy is going to set a screen. Race's guy is going to set a screen. And you're actually going to see some confusion from IU on how they guarded this. But Jerome Hunter does a really nice job of being in help side here. He slides over, and you're actually going to see a steal uh, from Hunter. So nice job from Hunter. He gets a steal. So, so far, we've seen a couple different coverages from the Hoosiers and how they've been able to guard that. And so let's get these lines off the screen for you. And now we're going to see um, another way IU guards ball screen. So right now, really nice job of Leo there being the tag guy. So um, if we rewind just a hair there. So on this ball screen action, you're going to see. So as race shows, this is his man here. So his man dives. So Leo does a nice job of being what they call the tag guy. He's got to get a hand on that guy to ensure they can't. Uh, throw the ball to the roller until race recovers to him and then Leo can recover back out to his man Which is exactly what we see happen So Leo recovers Nice job all around so still guarding still guarding so boom now we're gonna see a guard to guard switch So now Galloway is on his man nice little guard to guard switch Nice defense. I you get to stop so on the next clip um, We're gonna see Trace gets put into numerous ball screens and it's a hedge and recover until the last one. So we see him in a ball screen. We see ball screen. Nice little hedge and recover type deal there. Going to see him in another ball screen. Hedge and recover with Trace. But what's interesting is now we're going to see him set one less ball screen. So what's the difference here? So Trace is going to switch. I think the difference here is the shot clock. So it's at nine seconds. What that means is it's a late clock situation, so a switch might be more effective. And what we're going to see is Trace is going to actually switch on to the ball handler. Al's going to switch on to the screener. Now Trace ends up getting a foul here. Um, it's neither here nor there whether that was actually a foul. But, uh, but yeah, so you see a late clock switch with even a big and a guard. So we saw two ball screens Trace was in that he did not switch. He just hedged and recovered. And then you see a ball screen that he's in and he switches. I think it had to do with being a late clock situation. Obviously don't know that for a fact, but um, that's what I'm thinking that was. 
The next clip we see here is it's going to be a ball screen between uh, Lander and uh, Jerome Hunter here, or their men. I think this is a Jerome Hunter mistake. Um, I'm not positive, but um, to me, I think they're probably in a switching situation here, kind of guard to guard, if you will. And uh, whatever it was, it was a miscommunication or bad communication between Lander and Hunter because um, neither of them really stick with the ball handler. You see both of them kind of going with the other guy. It results in two points for uh, Tennessee Tech, as we'll see here. So ball screen, neither of them really take the ball handler. He gets two points. So not ideal there, but um, you know that's a freshman uh, and, and another guy that's a younger guy. And Hunter, uh, just miscommunication, poor communication. I'm sure they're going to be talking about that in their film uh, session there. So the last clip I want to dive into is is this one's interesting because this actually is uh you know you see the shot clock here is at 26 seconds so not a late clock situation but IU still switches with with everybody with Trace Jackson Davis and why this becomes an issue and why I think it should only be late clock switches it we'll see here in just a second so ball screen set Trace is on the ball now um, Tennessee's on a, a bigger guy down there they're so now Tennessee Tech's just working the ball around everything's fine and dandy but now look stop. So what's the problem here? It was an early switch, so Trace is now guarding a, a guard, and Trace Jackson Davis is out here. I'm not sure why that's white. <laughs> but yeah, so Trace Jackson Davis is way outside. So now your rim protector is who? None other than the stopper, Rob Finnessy. So this results in two points for Tennessee Tech because Trace Jackson Davis is floating around the perimeter and he's not inside to protect the paint. So uh, when IU goes with these smaller lineups and Trace Jackson Davis is, is definitively the five, um, early switches I don't see being a great coverage for them because you run into a problem like this where now you've got Rob Finnessy trying to protect the paint, um, which is not ideal. So yeah, so that is, uh, that is in, a, in a nutshell why I don't think early switches uh, will bode well for the Hoosiers. Um, but nonetheless, it was exciting to see them switch up their coverages a little bit. Looks like we might see a lot of guard-to-guard -guard switches. Um, so I would expect, especially in the Big Ten season where, where things are scouted very, very well, um, that we'll see teams try to exploit that. And, and you know, you might find, uh, you know, if Christian Lander, who's a little bit smaller stature, um, teams might try to attack him. So they'll set guard-to-guard -guard screens to get mismatches they want there. So we'll keep an eye on that, see if IU continues that switching coverage or if it's just something they're trying out. But uh, it was still exciting to see just a little bit of a different coverage. Nonetheless, that is, uh, is going to wrap up this IU film room, uh, diving into the Tennessee Tech game. Excited to dive into Providence Monday night. But uh, if you would, give me a follow on Twitter, at Coach Adrania. Like, subscribe, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, as we'll be doing more and more of these. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear your feedback on these. So uh, we'll see you next time. But I appreciate you watching, listening. And, uh, like I said, uh, give me a like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks a lot.